What up, YouTube? It's your boy, True Hero. And today, I bring to you the Grand Finals second place Diva Hero deck list for the I Am Nerd podcast tournament series number three. If I get second place another time, I don't know what I'm going to do. Second place at Tengu Tussle, second place at the local before nationals, second place at nationals, and now second place at this event. I finally understand what Vegeta felt like in comparison to Goku. Anyway, as you can see, I made some changes with this current deck versus the national deck list that I used. I included Tragodia. In my previous videos, I talked about Spear Reaper versus Tragodia. But in preparation for Deck Devastators 5, I made this change so that I could have my cake and eat it too. Because why not? But now you might be asking yourself, a true hero, what happened to you at Deck Devastators 5? Well, simple. I overslept. Usually, it starts at 2 a.m. KST, Korean Standard Time. However, this event started at 1 a.m. KST. So when I woke up, it was actually at the start of round two. So whoever my round one opponent was, their Christmas wish came early because I have not lost a single round one in my competitive Edison history. But anyway, back to the changes of the deck. In addition to adding Tragodia and including Spear Reaper in the deck, I also made changes to the side deck by adding Super Poly. Super Poly is one of the best cards in the meta right now because of the rise of Hero Beat and Diva Hero Beat. Not to mention, Super Poly allows me to play Super Alloy Beast Raptinus. The Gemini deck is real. Do not sleep on that deck or you will find yourself losing games or even sets to it. Not to mention, Raptinus can also be used against the Hero deck because if they summon double alias, well, Super Poly both their aliases away and make Raptinus. Anyway, usually when I have a tournament video, I showcase the entire run. But since this was just a small eight-man local, I'm only going to showcase the grand final set. So without further ado, let's get into the Yugums. Now, this tournament is a double elimination event. And previously, I lost to my opponent, Dank Arm Dragon, in the Swiss portion of this event, which means he only needs to win one set in order to win, whereas I need to win two sets in order to win. So my opponent wins the RPS, he sets a monster in two back rows, and immediately dust shoots me, sending back my most powerful card in my hand, Dark Arm. Take a look at my hand. It is not great by any means, but it is playable. The problem is, now that he has full knowledge of my hand, I can't bluff or even do any tricky plays. So what I decide to do is normal summon Sangan and attack into his face down monster. Because I have a read, he has Veyu and Icarus set. But much to my surprise, he actually has Mistral. So I set Mirror Force in an attempt to bait out his Icarus. Because if he Icarus is here, it's a two for two. And I'm completely okay with getting rid of his powerful Icarus attack in exchange for my Sangan, which will search me out a card such as Deep Sea Diva that can accelerate my Miracle Fusion plays. However, my opponent doesn't take the bait. Now, for his turn, he plays MST, gets rid of my Mirror Force, and sacrifices his Mistral for Sirocco. He runs over my Sangan, and I search out Diva as planned. And for turn, I draw into Malicious. Not the best draw. However, if you look at this hand, there are actually so many different lines that I can take. For example, I can set Treeborn and pass, and this allows me to set up for a Brionic play the following turn. So I can go bring back Treeborn during the standby, Normal Summon Diva, get Spine Gilman, make Brionic, pitch Malicious. And now I have Brio on the field with Malicious live in Grave. Another play I can do is set Reaper for defense, or summon Diva, get Gilman, make Cataster or Android. And lastly, I can even go Special Summon Prodigy, Sack for Malicious, and Phase Draw, because the odds of me dying at 62 are quite low, 
And then when Malicious goes to the grave as a result of battle between him and Sirocco, on my turn, I can make a level eight because I can go banish Miley for Miley, normal summon Diva. So this hand, despite not being the best, has so many different lines. And just imagine if I didn't get Dutch Judy, then Dark Arm would ensure that I win this game, as long as his back row isn't something like Royal Oppression. Now, after taking time to consider about which play to do, I decide to set Treeborn and pass. In hindsight, the play that I should have done was Special Summon Prodigy, Sack for Malicious, because not only does it make Malicious live, but it also draws me one card deeper into my deck. My opponent for turn draws one of the best cards he could have drew, which is Bora. Even Ashura would have been really good here, but the reason why Bora is so good is because it's obvious. He goes pumps Bora, attack, and I take 36. So from 62 down to 26, just that fast. On my turn, I draw into return, and return doesn't do anything in this situation. So I go for the only play possible, which is Black Rose. So I special summon Prodigy, normal summon Diva, bring out Gilman, and my initial read of him having Icarus attack was correct. So once he Icarus is here, I know that the game is over, but I don't want to scoop. I try to bluff by setting return, but my opponent just has everything and I concede. So going into game two, now I can go first. Now my hand was looking quite bad until I drew Stratos. So now this hand is very playable because I'll have pretty much a full-sized hand, which means Tragodia will be an MVP Plus, I have Royal Decree to back out or to block out any of his traps. But actually, now that we can see in the replay, my opponent, of course, has no traps when I have Royal Decree. So I summon Stratos and I add Prodigy to my hand and set Decree. My opponent summons Shora and he goes for a bit of an odd play. He just attacks. Usually, Kalut is used in a defensive manner, not so much in an offensive manner. So... My opponent attacks, but I don't have anything. So I take damage and I drop Tragodia. Now my opponent summons Veyu and surprise, surprise, has the brain control again, right? Because game one, he had brain control dust you. In this game, he also has brain control again. So he brain controls, he takes my Tragodia and he uses his effect. And now he makes a very strong Shora. So I flip the Kree. And I draw for turn, and I think about the best possible plan of action. So ultimately, what I decide to do is just set Snowman Eater and pass. While this tournament was taking place, actually, I wasn't in the comfort of my own home. I was at work. And as I've explained before, I'm actually an ESL teacher in South Korea. However, this tournament took place at a Thursday night Eastern Standard Time, which is around Friday morning for me. And generally Friday mornings, I don't have many classes, so I'm free to play dueling book. But during this grand final set, I actually had a class. So I was a bit distracted. So while my opponent was doing all this, I wasn't even looking at the screen. So I actually had to ask, sorry, who's attacking? So he attacks with Shora. And at this moment, I think about what the best play is. I have Snowman Eater set. So I have a lot of choices. I can hit arm wing, and by hitting arm wing, it stops me from taking the most amount of damage. However, the reason why I hit Shura, even though I wouldn't take any damage despite the fact he has army arm attached to him, is because if he goes Shura, run over Snowman Eater, and I don't target the Shura, he can actually search out a Veyu from the deck, because we can see he's only used one. So likely he has another Veyu. So he can search out a Veyu from the deck, and then main phase two, he can go synchro with Veyu and Arm Wing and make Armor Master. And now that he has Arm Wing and Veyu in the grave, he has access to another Armor Master. So basically, by not hitting Shora, then my opponent can potentially make two Armor Masters. So I have to hit Shora. Even though, yes, he can make an Armor Master with Gale and Dark Refer. What is worse, dealing with one Armor Master or dealing with two? The answer is obvious. So 
I hit the Shora to prevent this from happening, and I take all the rest of the damage, right? There's nothing that I can do about this, especially because I don't have any defensive cards. My opponent makes Armor Master, main phase two. I go Miracle Fusion. I'm not too worried about his back row because I'm Ruin Decree. I make absolute zero. And the problem is this is a real Armor Master, which means it cannot be destroyed by battle. So what I decide to do is sacrifice him for Malicious. So I sacrifice him for Malicious, which clears his field. He doesn't have a value engraved. So at this point, I'm hoping that on the following turn, I can draw a tuner. I run Triple Diva and a Plague, right? Even a Gold Sark would be useful because I can Sark for a tuner. My opponent draws into a trap, he sets it, and I draw on the Treeborn. And at this point, I begin to think, well, I cannot play the top deck game because he has a plethora of top decks that he can draw into that would be great. For example, he can draw his third Shora. He can draw any of his three Blizzards. He can even draw a Sirocco, and Sirocco beats every card that I have on the field and in my hand. So he has so many good top decks. So I figure that now, since he's going through a lot of monsters, at this point, he should start drawing a lot of traps. So Royal Decree will essentially make his turns dead. So I get on the offensive. I flip up Malicious, I normal Gilman, and I attack with both. So my opponent draws for turn again, and he draws another trap, just as predicted. I draw, and I think about what I can lose to. And once again, my opponent has so many good cards that he can draw into. Now, I summon Kai's here, and I have a read that all three of these are traps, and they were. But the reason why I summon Kai's is because he does way more damage than 800. And if my opponent were to draw into, like, let's say, a Blizzard, he would win on the spot. So I cannot afford to lose this game to his top deck. So I summon Caius and I just roll a die. One, two, three, four, five, six. I hit the newly set, but it was just another trap. And this attacks, these attacks rather, bring him down to 600. My opponent draws return Allure. He goes for the blind Allure. And afterwards, he just concede. So thanks to the power of Royal Decree, I'm able to win game two. Now, game three, I'm looking at my opening hand, and I'm like, yes, Decree and Consecrated, both of my side deck cards for Black Wings. So surely I'm going to win. And when he summoned Dark Greffer, once again, I said, yes, because if he summoned a Black Wing, then I would actually have to play this out very methodically. Because if he summons a Black Wing, there's a chance he has Icarus attack. So if I just go summon Consecrated, set Decree, he can just go end phase Icarus and clear my board. But when he summoned Dark Greffer, I was like, well, there's a chance he doesn't overextend and summon Arm Wing, which means on my turn, I can safely summon Consecrated and set Decree. So my opponent goes summon Greffer, activates his effect, puts both Aveyu and Soroka in the grave, sets two and end. But once again, he hits me with Trap Dust Shoot. So this is the second time this set that I've been hit by the first turn Dust Shoot. So he sends away the best card in my hand, which is Consecrated. Now, I think about what to do, and ultimately I decide to start for Future Fusion, and I realize that I cannot keep this Gref on the field, because if he has more values or Sorokas into his hand, then I'm going to lose. Because before I can do any big plays, I need to wait at least two turns until I can grab this Future Fusion from Gold Sark. So I summon Greffer and I crash. Thankfully, the attack goes through. I set the Kree and my opponent draws. He thinks for a second and he just decides to pass. I draw on the Caius and I don't even need to think about my turn. Since he didn't do anything, I'm not gonna do anything. And since he passed last turn, that also means the odds of him dropping my life points from 8,000 to zero are quite low. So I pass, and my opponent finally decides to go for an offensive play. He summons Arm Wing, hits me for 23. I drop Trigodia and end phase, I flip up the Kree. Now on my turn, I draw, and I finally add Future Fusion, and I begin to go off. And here, you can see Trigodia put in work, and why he's earned his spot on the team yet again. So I go Future Fusion, I send Molly and Treeborn, track effect, copy level six, banish Molly from Molly, summon Diva, get Diva, activate track effect, pitch Caius to take his arm wing, 
Synchro into Colosso, Synchro into Darken. There are three warriors total in the grave because he has Greffer, that's one. And I have Molly and Greffer as well, which puts Colosso to 31. 31, 23, 26 is 8,000 perfect. So I tackle to everything and I take the first set of grand finals. And now the reset happens. So for set two, I do win the RPS, but my opening hand is not the strongest. I decide to go for the first turn deck Debbie in order to give me complete knowledge of his hand. So I summon Diva into Gilman, make Cataster, set deck Debbie, and I set Bottomless. And my opponent has, of course, Heavy Storm. So I was a little agitated about that, but it's Yu-Gi-Oh, what can you do? The only reason why I set two though, is because I have Gores in my hand. So worst comes to worst, my opponent thinks that he got a plus one off of Heavy, which he did, right? However, if he attacks direct with anything, I drop Gores and now I become in an advantage situation. And since I'm going to chain Deck Devi, I'll know whether or not he has a counter to Gores or not before I drop it. So anyway, I chain Deck Devi to Heavy Storm and I can, I can see my opponent doesn't have anything. But one thing that he does have is again, Trap Dushu, first turn. So this is the third time that I've been hit by Trap Dushu. This card is glued to this man's hand. But anyway, my deck Devi hits two cards out of his hand. I have knowledge of what he has. He has knowledge of what I have because he does shoots me. And now we're just in a draw pass game state. So I draw and I pass. I know my opponent has D prison, so I don't want my Sangan to just get prison for no reason. So I set him instead. My opponent continues to draw and pass. I lure and I get rid of Gores. Now, generally I like to keep Gores but the reason why I lured was because Gores is only good when he's dropped as a surprise factor. And since my opponent knows he has Gore, I have Gores, he's going to be playing around Gores the entire game. So I draw into Future Fusion, which is really good. I play it right away because I know that his back room is deep prison and I'm not too worried about it. And I flip up Sangan and I attack. The reason why I attack with Sangan is because I wanted to bait out his deep prison and as many of his trap cards as possible. That way, when two turns pass and I summon absolute zero, he can freely attack. Now I am aware my opponent still has bottomless because I saw it with deck Devi, but bottomless is a card that I'll have to deal with when the time comes. So I attack here, he prisons just as I expected. One turn goes by, he summons Blizzard, brings back his Kalut and attacks at two back rooms and passes. Now I try to bring back Treeborn, Obviously, obviously I know you cannot bring back Treeborn when Future Fusion or any spell and trap cards are in your zone. However, like I mentioned before, while this grand final set was taking place, I had a class going on. Just picture this. You are in a grand final set and there are little Korean children in the background saying, teacher, I don't have my pencil. Teacher, what do you have to do again? Teacher, can you help me? It's just like you cannot fully focus on an intense match when you're helping all of these little Korean kids. Now, of course, I love my job. I love helping them. But it's just unfortunate that both things happen to take place at the same time. This tournament was supposed to happen one hour earlier than it actually happened. But it took a while to get enough people to enter in the event. And by the time it actually started, then that kind of messed up the scheduling. And therefore, even though I had planned to finish this event before I had class, it wound up overlapping. So anyway, I apologize for the mistake and I go heavy storm and he does a very strange play. He Icaruses away his own tuner, which I was okay with because that's one less card that I have to deal with. So here I go Miracle Fusion, I bring out zero and I run over his Kalut. I set a back row and I pass, and I draw into Reaper right on time, okay? And I begin to go on the offensive. So I hit him both for 28, I drop a card out of his hand, and at this point, I'm feeling lucky, I'm feeling good. My opponent draws for turn, he draws into Oppression, he summons Sirocco, and I said, no way. The reason why I Mirror Forced, even though I have zero on the field, is because Let's say my opponent has Icarus attack, then he'll just clear my board. So I mirror force Sirocco 
That way, just in case he did draw an Icarus attack, I don't lose everything. On my turn, I draw and I draw into MST, which was an amazing draw because now I don't even have to play into Mirror Force because at this point he hasn't used it. So I space his back row and I hit him for 28 again. Now, the reason why I attack with Reaper, because some might say, oh, that's a greedy attack. Look at his life point total. It's 2400, which means if he draws a monster that can be mind controlled, then I can just attack direct with zero and zero will become lethal. So this play was really good because it puts him under one direct attack from absolute zero. So my opponent draws return, he draws in the solemn, and he makes arm wing from Vay's effect. I take damage, he sets a back row. Now, if I did not draw into solemn judgment on this turn right here, I would have went for the play that I just told you about, which is mind controls monster and attack for game. But since I drew it in solemn, I was like, well, now there's merit in waiting. Because let's say that back row is a card like Mirror Force. Well, then there's no reason to play in the Mirror Force if I have a card that can stop it. So I set Solemn and I end. My opponent draws an Abora, which was really good for him. I take some damage. I draw a Diva. And at this point, I just play my heart out. And I'm not even worried about what he does. At one point, I believe Dank Arm Dragon puts up like the Thinky Face. But like I simply don't care. And I just show him that I have Solemn. And he just concedes. So things are looking good for your boy, a true hero. I am up one game in our grand final set. And all I have to do is win one more game and the tournament's mine. So Dank, Dank Arm, <laughs> almost called him Dark Arm. Dank Arm goes first and he goes Roman Shora. Must be nice. All right. And my he sets a back row and pass. So at this point, I think long and hard about what the best play is. And ultimately, I decide to just set Snowman Eater and pass. The reason why I don't play Future Fusion is because if I play Future Fusion in conjunction with Snowman Eater, it sets me up for Icarus Attack. If I just play Future Fusion, if he has Royal Oppression, then I lose the most powerful card in my hand. One of the most powerful cards in my hand because I also have Brain Control. Now, my logic is... Since I know he has Kalut, if I only set a monster on his turn, he'll be tempted to summon Kalut, search out Gale, Synchro, and make Brionic. Then Brionic will pitch, return my monster, and he'll attack with everything. It won't be lethal, but the key is he'll have Brionic on his board. And since I have brain control, on my turn, I can brain control his Brionic, clear whatever problematic card he has, which will more than likely be like a back row, and then safely play my Miracle Fusion, my Future Fusion first and my Miracle Fusion if needed. So this was the reasoning and logic beyond my play as to why I just set Snowman Eater and pass. My opponent draws for turn, he attacks, and I was very surprised because once again, he should have especially because I only have just a set monster, summon the Kalut. So my Snowman Eater kills his Shora, and on his turn, he summons Blizzard. He goes Blizzard, brings back his Shora, sets a back row, and pass. Now at this point, I need to commit cards to the field because if I don't, I'm going to lose. So I have no choice, and I play Future Fusion. And he has the Icarus Attack, which I am completely okay with. I played Future Fusion as a bait in order to bait out the Icarus attack. Because look at my hand. This is actually game. It's the Diva Hero OTK. Brain Control Sirocco, Normal Summon Diva, get Diva, Synchro on the Bryonic, Bryonic Pitch, bounce his back row, banish Miley for Miley, Synchro to Colossal Fighter, Miracle Fusion, zero. So now I have zero, Colossal Fighter, and Bryonic on the field. And zero is powered up because Bryonic's a water, and all this damage is over 8,000. So I simply have game in this situation. However, my plans are stopped when I go brain control. And I brain control first because obviously I don't want to get Icarus in case he has a second one. But my opponent flips up, pulling the rug. And I was like, wow, I had game. If that back row was something like a D-Prison or a Mirror Force or like a Yada, a lot of Blackwing decks play that then he simply loses. 
but he had pulling the rug. So I'm forced to just attack with Shora and give it back. Giving back a card that you brain controlled is just so, it's such a bad feeling. It is a terrible feeling. So I give him back his Shora. He attacks direct for 18. He sets a back row and he passes. And I draw on the Stratos. And the reason why drawing the Stratos here is so good is because I have game once again. Summon Stratos, add Prodigy, activate Miracle Fusion, banish Stratos and Diva. Now I have zero on the field with Return Set. Activate Return, bring back Stratos and Diva. Activate Stratos's first effect to pop his back row. Synchro with Stratos and Diva into Bryonic. Activate Bryonic's effect, pitch Malicious to return his Shora since he has Kalut in hand. Banish Molly from Molly. Now my field would be Bryonic, Zero, who's at 3,000 because of Bryonic, and Malicious. All three of these, if they get a direct attack in, the total damage is 61. So I win the set. However, while I attempted to do this play, my opponent had the perfect card, which was Royal Oppression. And the moment he played Royal Oppression, I already knew that this game was over. That was my last ditch effort. I attack here, he colludes. I draw to see what my next card is. I see a Caius and I just concede. So I open up quite well. Not the best hand, not the worst hand. But overall, it's quite a good hand. So I start for heavy. And the reason why I start for heavy is because the only thing that I would lose to would be back rows. Now, of course, I could start for decree as well, but decree is too slow and heavy gives you that immediate gratification. So I summon Stratos and I add Prodigy and I am feeling good because I have access to Prodigy Caius. I have a heavy storm coming up. Everything is lining up. I set bottomless and I pass. My opponent has the MST for my bottomless, which is unfortunate. He summons Shora and goes for the offensive attack again. And I'm like, okay, but there's nothing I can do. It worked out for him. So he summons Gale. He attacks direct for 13, which was a bit of a misplay in my opinion, because if I had Wars or Trag, I would be in such an advantage state. But anyway, I don't have anything. So main phase two, he just sets a back row and he passes. Now I draw into the second malicious return, and that was just a terrible feeling. But I made a read that I'm not going to get another turn because in a perfect world, I would stall. I would wait a turn. That way, I could have the option to play Heavy Storm before doing this play. But since he left Shora and Gale on the field, I mean, that by itself is 31 and I'm at 53. So it wouldn't take much for him to just OTK me. So I summon Prodigy, Special Summon Prodigy, and I sacrifice him for Caius. I hit the Shora and I am forced to attack Gale because if I don't attack Gale, and he'll just half and he'll run over my Caius. And the reason why I hit Shora is because it cuts off his level fours. And cutting off level fours in a Blackwing deck is one of the most crucial points to winning the matchup. So I attack here and my opponent unfortunately has D Prison. So at this point, what I should have done was set return. Even though I'm getting Heavy Storm next turn, I can chain return. Not to mention if I draw a card like uh, Deep Sea Diva, that only makes my return even better because I can go Diva, bring Alspine Gilman, and then I can Synchro with the Kais that I bring back, make a Stardust or a Colossal, depending on the situation, and then I have a level eight with Spine Gilman. So I should have set return here. However, once again, I was distracted with all the Korean kids in the background. So anyway, I pass and my opponent summons Blizzard and he attacks direct for 26. He makes Brionic and he does a very good play here. This was definitely a top tier play. He goes Pitch Veyu, return his own Blizzard to his hand. And now he has it set up so that he has three darks in the grave. Unbeknowing to me, he also has Sirocco. So that means he can go for Veyu Sirocco. And knowingly to me, he has Blizzard. And his Blizzard is live because it can bring back a Gale or it can bring back a Kalut. So I draw for turn and... None of these cards help. There's not a single card in my hand that 
does anything. And at this point, I knew I lost. And I was kind of beating myself up because, once again, if I set the return, I wouldn't have been in a completely terrible position because I could have went for, like, return, bring back the Caius, run over his Brio, and then, like, sacrifice my Caius for a Malicious, right? So I'll have a Malicious set, and I know that he doesn't have any level fours in the grave, which means he can't, like, make an arm wing. So on his turn, even if he goes, like, summon Blizzard and bring back a Gale or a Clute, it doesn't, it's not lethal, right? It's not lethal because the monster you bring back has to be in defense. And if he makes a synchro, instead of having two monsters, he has one. So once again, because I was in such a rush, I made this crucial misplay, but it's life, right? It is what it is. So I summon Prodigy, I sack for Molly, I set two back rows and I pass, I draw into Sangan. My opponent draws into the brain control, but it doesn't really make a difference. The fact that I left this Brio on the field was game. So he goes, activate Brio effect, return one of my back rows, pitches a Sirocco, and I already knew the game was over. So I just let him finish it out. I could have chain returned, but the problem with chain return is then my life points will be so low that he can just attack over my malicious and it'll be game. So he returns everything. He summons Armwing, he summons Brio, uh, Blizzard, and I just wish him GG. So definitely congratulations to dank arm dragon for taking me out and until the next Yu-Gi-Oh event which for me there are three major tournaments that i'm planning on entering i'm planning on entering in a multi-day swiss hat tournament so for all you hat fans please be on the lookout for that tournament run also i'm going to enter in the hrc and rbet online tournament which will take place october 1st as for the big question which is a true hero are we going to see you at RBT IRL Orlando? And the answer is no, you're not going to see me. I'm sorry to all my fans, to all my supporters. Like, I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. And the reason is because tickets to America are so expensive. I've been checking every single day, but the cheapest that I can find a flight for is about $1.2, $1.3,000. So it's like, that's not going to happen for an RBT where it's like, yeah, if I win the event, it's worth it. But like, even if I come in second place, it's just a big nag. So I really, really want to participate in more IRL events. But when you live in Korea, you just got to do what you can. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this grand finals run. And until next time, a true hero out. Peace. One quick thing before I sign out. For those of you who are unaware, I actually offer Yu-Gi-Oh! Tutoring for Edison format only. And with my help, perhaps you can become, instead of the second place master like myself, the first place master. Anyway, the prices are quite reasonable, in my opinion. $10 per replay and $25 an hour, where we can do anything you want from a discussion to theory crafting, to even us going on Dueling Book together and playing to see how we can improve your gameplay. Anyway, if you're interested, I'm going to leave my Discord in the description of this video. So I look forward to hearing from anyone who's interested in taking their Yu-Gi-Oh! game to the next level. And with that, a true hero out for good this time. Peace. Subscribe or you too will be sent to the Shadow Realm.